Welcome back to Piers Morgan Sense. She's the self-help author and Democratic presidential candidate who once said she would harness love to defeat Donald Trump. She believes the power of the mind may have prevented a hurricane hitting the United States in 2019. She once wrote, the sickness doesn't exist and diseases like cancer and AIDS and other physical illnesses are physical manifestations of a psychic scream. Now, some of that she's walked back with a history of saying things that many may deem quirky at best. Does Marianne Williamson really believe she has a shot of becoming the first female president of the United States? Well, let's find out. She joins me now. Marianne Williamson, great to have you on the programme. Thank you so much. So, look, I want to start with some of those things that you've said in the past. I know you've walked some of them back, but when no, you I run... I haven't for... walked any of them. Well, you, I think you did when you it's talked about... A... Okay, you don't take any of it back. It's not about walking them back. It's about pointing out how disconnected they are from the context in which any of those things were said. I never said that the power of the mind... It, it, these are all misrepresentations and mischaracterizations of what I've said. If you say I have to walk them back, it's as though I'm supposed to admit that I said something completely ridiculous. Nothing that I said within the context that I said it was ridiculous at all. That's all. Would you, would you say you regret any of those things that... We referenced. Not if you look at the context in which they were spoken. No, I, you know, no. I shouldn't apologize for the fact that there is now an understanding of a mind-body connection. Anybody in any kind of a psychotherapeutic situation might say, "Oh, I'm in such pain; it feels like my body is screaming." Listen, I have osteoporosis. My mother died of diabetes. My sister died of, of breast cancer. My father died of colon cancer. I have spent most of my career being of service to people with AIDS and other critical illnesses. No one needs to school me on the reality of illnesses and its, and its ravages. I am not a woman who doesn't understand those things. You are a woman, and if you were to win, you would become <clears throat> the first female president of the United States. And that does beg the question, the burning question, one that has tripped up yeah. so many famous people in the world of politics around the world has cost people their jobs. So let me ask you straightforwardly, what is a woman? What is a woman? Yeah. Well, a woman, you know, if you look at it only biologically, you know, I wrote a book called A Woman's Worth. I am a woman who was born into a woman's body. I think of myself as a woman. But it's a different, it's, it's a different world today. People can define their sex, their sexuality, binary, non-binary, however they want. I just know what I am as a woman, so I'm not going to get trapped into any of that. You know, we live in a free society. And in a free society, people can identify however they wish to identify, do whatever they do, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. And I have no problem with that. What about when it does hurt, for example, female sports people who are suddenly seeing themselves come up against trans women who might be six foot four inches tall and are powering past them in swimming pools? That does do yeah. genuine harm. What's your view about that issue? That is a complicated subject, absolutely. But there are ways through muscle mass, through uh, hormones, through chemical testing, there are ways to, to determine but whether you can't or not think, a You can't race think, though, as a, as a female candidate to be president, you cannot yeah. surely think it is remotely fair for trans athletes. And I've got nothing against trans people. I've always supported their rights to fairness and equality. Yeah. I just feel that this is completely unfair and trans athletes should simply not be allowed to, to compete against biological females. End. Those situations, once again, they're complicated. They're not all the same. It's not that and there complicated. there are officials. It is, actually, because there are some situations where it may be what you just said, other situations where it may not be. You know, it's important that we protect the rights of the minority. It's also important that we protect, protect the rights of the majority. So those things should be determined according to factors that are, uh, that are agreed upon by the sports officials and all of the people seeking to uh, be part of those races uh, should be protected. Their rights should be protected and honoured. What would be the first thing you'd do as president if you won? One of the first things I would do is uh, determine that there would be an audit for the Pentagon every cent, every cent that we spend there. I would cancel all contracts where the United States government has contracts with union-busting companies. I would deschedule marijuana from a Schedule One drug. I would bring together a group to have a very serious conversation about how we were going to uh, get to universal health care. And I would also use the marching rights that are part of the uh, Bayh-Dole Act of 1980, by which pharmaceutical companies are told that if you develop a drug with even one dollar of taxpayer money, which means most drugs in the United States, that the government has the right to lower those prices. 
I would bring together a group of leaders who were the experts on childhood, everything having to do with the neurophysiology of children, uh, neuropsychology, the, uh, the needs of children in terms of health, in terms of education, everything that it would take to have the greatest experts on childhood, because I want to develop a, a department of children and youth. I want a massive uh, transfer of resources into the uh, lives of children 10 years and younger. Okay. I wanted to Listen, have this is all... Listen, I'm, I don't want to stop you, but I don't want to run out of all time, but... OK, that all sounds very laudable, as a, as a, and you rattled them off. You've obviously thought about it a lot, which is good. What would you do, for example, as Commander-in-Chief if China invaded Taiwan? That's a very, very difficult one. That's a very, very difficult one. And hopefully, hopefully, if I'm the day I'm president, China will not have invaded Taiwan. I will certainly not poke the bear. I would certainly try to walk back any of this almost Cold War type of conversation that is happening too much but in what this if country they actually did it? between the United States. What if you were commander in chief and they literally, <clears throat> in, as many people think is highly likely in whoever is the next president in that term of office, if they did invade Taiwan. Yeah. Joe Biden has said he yeah. would be there to help. Would you? What did you say that Joe Biden has said? He said that he would help the Taiwanese, if that happens. Well, there are different ways. There are different ways to help the Taiwanese, and I believe that we're trying to help them right now. And one of the ways that we're also trying to help the Taiwanese is to build better relationships with China so that we can be more on a road towards healthy collaboration, which we will need, not only economically, but in order to de uh, deal with the climate crisis in the years ahead. So let's right now work on where we are. Let's not poke the bear. Let's take the temperature down. Let's think in terms of, t of China, not as an enemy, but as a collaborator, hopefully someone that we can compete with in a healthy way. The trouble that's is, what my attention Marianne, is on. Well, I say it's a great respect, but people will say that's very naive, that we've just, you know, if you did that attitude with, say, Vladimir Putin, that's not going to stop him invading countries. And people look to America, for better or worse, as the global policeman, and if you want to run the country, you want to be the boss, you're going to face some very tough decisions about what you do when the bears actually go and do bad stuff. Thank you, Paris. I understand what the role of the commander-in-chief of the United States is. But there was nothing naive at all about what I just said about China. And the last thing I'm not naive about is uh, Vladimir Putin. Joe Biden has said he won't debate other Democrat candidates in the primary mm -hmm. season. Uh, many people think that's just cowardly. What's your view? Of course he should debate us. There are three candidates for this nomination. There is not an enthusiasm in this country, as you were mentioning earlier. There is not an enthusiasm for a Trump-Biden rematch. Mm -hmm. The majority of people have said that they wish the president would not run again. If the American people hear his agenda for the next four years, and they are he hear my agenda for the next four years, and the agenda of anyone else who is running, and they say, through their votes in a Democratic primary, Yes, I think Joe Biden is the best candidate to win in 2024 and the best leader for the next four years. Then God bless him, he should be the one. But the idea that the DNC and the Democratic elite establishment can just shoehorn him into the nomination is undemocratic. You, if you have a party, which we do, that likes to think of itself as a champion of democracy, we should not be so wary of democracy in our no, own I house. I so it is important that the president debate me. I completely agree. Um, I, I suspect he's quite afraid of debating you, actually. Um, <clears throat> what do you make of this issue of the Biden family and all this foreign money from adversaries, which appears to have been pouring into their coffers? Well, you know, it appears to be. We don't know yet. The facts aren't all out. This is, we have rules of due process in this country. And no one, whether it's Donald Trump or uh, President Biden, should be above the law. We'll see what happens. But no matter what happens, this is certainly a shadow on his candidacy. And one more factor for people to think about in terms of a president whose approval ratings are already very low. So there's Hunter Biden is not his father. We don't know. We don't, we don't know anything yet. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is not great going into a presidential, uh, presidential mm -hmm. race. All the more reason why the president should be debating me and anyone else who is running so that we can present to the American people who get lost in all this. This is what is so wrong. You know, as you were speaking about earlier, it's like a circus of smut and yeah. racehorse and, and gossip. We need to think about the American people who are lost in all this. The American people, one in four of whom uh, have medical debt, mm -hmm. 18 million of whom cannot afford to pay the, the uh, 
uh, pay in order to fulfill the prescriptions that their doctors give them. Half of our seniors live on less than $25,000 a year. We have a third of our workers who live on less than $15 an hour and cannot even pay, their, uh, pay for a place to live. These are the people who are looking at all of these institutions and saying, you're failing us. You're not doing anything for me. And that's what I want to talk about. And I final, want to talk about an economic U-turn in this country. Final yeah. question, Marianne. Should somebody who's just been found guilty by a jury of sexually abusing a woman, should that person be allowed to run for president? Everybody needs to vote for... Uh, well, right now, they can legally. So every voter has to choose for themselves. But I'll tell you something. This is not about... Listen, people who are total Trump supporters like the person that you had on earlier, she doesn't care. They're not going to care. That's not what's going to lose for the Democrats in 2024. The power of Trump is not what's going to lose for the Democrats in 2024. What could lose for us, however, is droves of people staying home, particularly young people, particularly young people who are not going to go to war for a president who approved the Willow Project and has given more oil drilling permits than even Trump mm -hmm. did, and who do not see in any way regarding their health care, regarding their capacity to go to college, regarding these t college loan debts that are tracking them, they don't look at the Democratic Party and feel they have my back either. No, I think That's you're right. That's what is dangerous Mary for the Democratic Party in 2024, all the people who might be staying home unless we present them a genuine opportunity, a genuine alternative of economic okay. reform and a whole new face. And obviously, I think that face should be me. Obviously, you think that face should be you, and you put your case very compellingly. And it's great to have you on Piers Morgan Uncensored. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Getting very interesting, that race in America, just on the Democrat side, with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and now Marianne Williamson, both polling surprisingly strongly against Joe Biden. May not be a given that he ends up being the Democrat candidate. That would be a bombshell.